Hi, everyone. My name is Lila Sharani here, and I'm so honored to be your Minister of Culture, Multiculturalism, and Status of Women. Um, I am so privileged to be sitting in Treaty 7 territory today, but we're coming from all over the province, Treaty 6, 7, and 8 territory, and land that also holds very deep importance to the Métis people of Alberta. Um, I'm joined by Colleen Peary, the Director of Voice, and uh, Colleen, I'll get you to, once we get started, I'll get you to introduce everybody else as well, too. And uh, Rick Walters, who actually works for the Ministry of Culture, Multiculturalism, and Status of Women, but has also worked on this project. So as you may know, uh, May is Sexual Violence Awareness Month. And uh, all month long, but I mean, really all year, all every day, we have an absolute responsibility to be spreading the message around the importance of these discussions and to be doing everything we can to address and prevent sexual violence in our communities. And we know that two in three women are facing uh, sexual assault and one in three men in their lifetime. And these numbers are huge. And so we're always looking for solutions and ways to be able to come through this. And I'm really excited to have this conversation because you're gonna meet some amazing folks that are, are really dedicated to this and around preparing our youth for, and setting them up for success when they encounter difficult conversations, especially around consent and uh, gender-based violence. So last November, I was so honored to um, work with Colleen and uh, bring together a new program called VOICE. And the VOICE program is uh, a creative and innovative way to foster change in schools and communities. And as you'll see today, we have wonderful athletes from professional sports teams who are helping to guide other young athletes and people, not only to, to overcome barriers, but to really, really feel comfortable about being uncomfortable and having these conversations. So Colleen, I'm so excited. Uh, to be with you and so honored uh, to be able to participate both Amanda and I Amanda is my press secretary who is on this call as well too we actually did the full program with you uh, it was life-altering life-changing and so good to see you and uh, maybe you could introduce us to everybody who's here so that um, the wonderful folks who are going to get to see this will understand who it is we're with today uh, sure um, so I'm Colleen Peary again um, director of voice and on the call today we have Marina Hepner, who works with Voice, but is also uh, an athletic therapist uh, with Golden Bears football. We have Jacob Biggs uh, and Tyson Rowe from the Calgary Dinos football team. And we have Matt O'Donnell, and I want to get this right, 11 years CFL veteran, 10 maybe with no season last year, but anyway. Um, and it's really great. We have also Rick Walters, um, obviously on the call, not that I have to introduce him at all, but uh, it's important. He's been around, I think, sport and violence prevention work for a while now. So. Um, everyone on this call today really has played an integral role, I think, in shaping the program of voice, which really is about leadership, character development, communication, um, and really getting into, you know, school systems, community, using the platform of sport, um, and the opportunity that sport provides us to communicate, educate, raise awareness, but hopefully get into that mentorship um, role with youth um, and have them take a critical part in the learning of gender-based violence and, and what that is, because the first thing we need to do is educate everyone on what gender-based violence is. And this being May Sexual Violence Awareness Month, um, that is a component of gender-based violence. And as we've seen over the last year, uh, incidents of gender-based violence in many forms has just skyrocketed. Yeah, and thanks, Colleen. And, and so one of the things, and thank you for explaining sort of the concept behind voice, that's perfect. And so when we think about sport and just the, this avenue to be able to address gender-based violence and um, the, you know, being able to sit with these wonderful young athletes and go through a lot of really, really um, very difficult, very personal backgrounds and you know situations that you know they've they've been in and participated in or, or have been able to help so can you talk to us a little bit about why why sport why are we why are we using sport as sort of the uh, vehicle for this well i think you know first and foremost everyone looks to sport to unite to come together over a common goal a common interest and sport sort of happens over the lifetime so it's really about a system about a pipeline and if we're going to end gender-based violence we have to think about how we integrate those messages uh, into a system, into a pipeline throughout the lifetime. So, um, you know, as much as these individuals on the call with me and who have taken the training are athletes, that's just one component um, of their identity. They are community members. They are young men, um, first and foremost, before they're an athlete. 
Um, so they have an opportunity not only to um, be leaders on the field, but also foster and model healthy relationships, respect, integrity um, in the community. And I think that's really the mm -hmm. purpose of the sport. That's amazing. So, and I wanted to open this up to uh, Tyson, Jacob, Matthew, and Marina too, especially because you're dealing with these athletes in a very different place. I imagine that your relationship with them is very unique and you learn a lot. So in the, so, you know, uh, Colleen launched voice, you know, about six months ago and was hosting these mentorship sessions. Um, and like I said, I was so honored to sit with you on so many of those. I learned so much about you, all of you and myself actually. So Jacob, maybe we'll start with you. Can you tell me a little bit like what the first six months have been like? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the first six months, I think the first month that I started with voice, um, it was such a learning curve, especially some of the things that we talked about right away were, you know, again, like exactly like you said, making people comfortable with the uncomfortable topics. Um, and I think that was one thing that voice really changed for myself was just being able to be comfortable with the people beside me, uh, talk about issues that people are just so hesitant to talk about these days that are so important to talk about and communicate openly. Um, again, just making a difference and showing, you know, younger generations of athletes that they're so much more past the athlete than, you know, some people assume. Um, student athletes, I think is a huge thing. You know, you can have so much uh, credibility and create so much change within your community that I think sometimes goes unrecognized, especially in the university level. Um, so just teaching these kids, um, helping them, mentoring them, showing them that there's just so much more to the side. I think that was probably the biggest thing in the first, uh, first six months of boys for myself. Matthew, like the, the sessions can get pretty intense. Hey, like you've, you've been, you know, doing some of this work. Can you talk a little bit about the intensity of the sessions and kind of what, what your first six months, next six months are going to look like? Well, there's a lot of uh, the fine tuned balancing, you know, you want to be brutally honest, but you don't want to scare people. It's a topic that's been taboo. It's been undercover. People don't want to talk about it. And the biggest thing I try to stress to them is why don't people want to talk about it? You know, are they, you know, uncomfortable or they bury their head in the sand they don't want to recognize it you know whatever reason is because i sent calling an article today saying okay central alberta cases of domestic violence the call center has gone up 250 percent 250 percent since covid started so we're seeing these stress factors come out that are you know <clears throat> inflating the issue and we're seeing okay what's being reported what's not being reported the tip of the iceberg so we're trying to be as brutally honest as we can but also kind of not be overly scareful in our tactics because we need to talk about it, but we also need to be honest about it because my generation, older generations, past generations have failed to address this. The whole head in the sand theory is not going to work anymore. We're seeing these studies where, okay, it used to be one, one woman died every six days at the hands of their partner. And now it's every two and a half days in the last seven years, it's more than doubled. Like it's just not okay. So we're seeing these figures, but we're seeing people not address it. So we need to just put it out front and be like, this is what it is. We can't ignore it anymore. So next six months will be, you know, individualized programs with certain schools and classes and just going through the same training that we went through just say, hey, hey, let's talk about it. We know it's difficult. We know it's uncomfortable, but we just need to start talking about it. That's the first step. Tyson, can you build on that a little bit regarding talking about this, about the intensity, how it's impacted you? Absolutely. Um... When I first attended, um, I, I, I felt the same way. Um, this is intense and it almost felt just because it, it's not something I've ever done before that it was like, what are we doing here? This is overboard. But uh, then I realized that, um, first of all, what we're talking about is real and um, that's intense. What's intense is that this, this is happening in real life. And the situations that people encounter um, are intense and, 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 and can be life-changing. And, and we just heard about the numbers. And, and so it's, these, are serious, these are serious things. And so serious conversations do need to take place. And um, one thing I too realized was that um, as an athlete, preparation is, is key. And we're always preparing for, for our next opponent and we're always working to get better. And, and so um, why, why not apply that to 
um, these serious situations um, that are, are more serious than sports. And, and to think of the hours that I, that I put in um, individually and as a team to, to prepare for, for an opponent, um, these conversations need to be had because like I said, these, um, these situations are serious and um, they do happen. You can't ignore that. It happens everywhere. It happens around you. At one point, you you uh, will be a bystander, or you may you may be in a place where you can be a victim. And and so to um, um, spend time to to have these conversations so that you're ready for um, when when these situations arise and 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 better equipped um, on how to handle them. That's awesome. Marina, did you want to chime in on this a bit? I mean, having worked with these lovely gentlemen and just the work that you do, I imagine this is a spectacularly important discussion to have. Oh, it absolutely is. Like this has helped me so much in um, the way that I would kind of handle situations like this. Like um, you get very close with the athletes and you work one-on-one -on -one with them and the athletic therapy side of it, like it is a therapy side of it. Um, whether it's like the formal athletic therapy side or informal, they just need someone to open up to. Um, and so oftentimes actually like the difficult discussions are had in that clinic room. Um, and so I think that the training that I've had here, it's helped me immensely through that. Like you, you're able to have these discussions. It's not, it's uncomfortable because of the nature of the beast, but it is so important to be had like Tyson was talking about. And so I just really think that the, yeah, the training that I have gone through with voice um, and the fact that I've gotten to know the athletes even better through that situation has helped me a ton. They're, they're so willing to have these conversations. They just need someone else to be on the other side of it. And it's honestly been quite incredible to see the vulnerability of such like strong athletes because you really don't see that side of it very often. So I, I feel very fortunate to actually have gone through the training and to be able to apply it in an area that you wouldn't necessarily Put together with it right away but it's truly helped that's amazing because not everybody has a marina and now you know you're they're able to learn from you how to unpack that and cope a little bit along working with colleen and then being able to put that together in a package be able to pay it forward a little bit hey and use that and rick i wanted to bring you into this conversation as well too and i'd love for the athletes to chime in on this next bit too, this next bit as well because i'm sure that you've heard things from the youth and Colleen, you should also chime in on this too, that has been super impactful, something that has been a real game changer for you. So Rick, do you mind leading us through that discussion a little bit, something that maybe you've heard or, because these guys are used to us, <laughs> yeah. but then they also have younger people that they're working with. So it's just something that are things that you've learned from the, our younger generations that have really, you know, and especially with your work in this space. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, I think we have to applaud yourself, Minister and, and, and Amanda, just for, I think it's the belief in, in, in what the program might, might look like. Um, because I, I think I, I'm a big quote guy and I have a quote in my office and it, and it says, if, you've always, uh, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always gotten. And I think you guys have done an amazing job of seeing past that and realizing Matt did a great job of talking about some of the stats and how they, they continue to escalate. Um, and so there, there clearly have to be something different that's tried. Uh, and I, I think sometimes it takes a visionary to say, okay, I believe in this. Uh, I think that this has a chance to be successful. Let me put resources, time, effort, passion into this. And I think Without that, then there isn't a whole lot of change. So I think um, you do have to applaud your ministry and the efforts that, that, that yourself, Amanda, and the rest of the staff have gone into to, uh, trying to support this. Um, I think you do see, and, and people have talked about it on the call, the potential for, for change to happen through, through, through the VOICE program. Uh, you see, um, and Marina talked about this, athletes that are powerful by nature and stature that now are, are vulnerable and open to having discussions. Um, and then when they, and I think we're, we're, what the athletes are able to do then is by nature, they're usually a little bit more charismatic, usually a little bit more confidence just by nature of some of the things that they do. And they're able to be sensitive and vulnerable to the rest of, um, to the rest of their community. So 
the filters start going down to everybody. They start going down to the young people that, that might not even be involved in any type of sports. They might be, they might like drama, they might like the arts, they might like whatever. But at the same time, all of the situations that um, the young men are dealing with will happen to everybody. So uh, it's been interesting and amazing just to see how, how they put trust in the fact that these conversations could help change their community. So um, I know I didn't really answer your question, but, but I think <laughs> okay. that it's is so important. Oh, it's beautiful. You're allowed to answer however you want. Colleen, can I move to you? Like something impactful that has been said. I mean, you've had so much experience in this. I've learned so much from you, but is there something that sticks with you, that resonates with you, that really inspires you to keep going? Something that was said, done, or otherwise? Um, I, you know, honestly, I think one of the things that keeps me going is, you know, Matt alluded to seven years ago um, and some of the numbers that have shifted and whether that's reporting um, or policies being put in place or what that structure is. But for me, it's every time you go into a space or right now on Zoom calls, I literally just look at all these different faces in the room, on the screen, and, and I know there's a story behind there. Um, because if we have to unpack gender-based violence, and what that looks like and how um, mental health affects that, how racism affects that, how it intersects with sexual violence. But everyone has a story. And so if for me, it's when the guys actually get comfortable in that space. So this is where the time really comes in. You can't expect anyone, regard, whether it's athletes or an arts class or a comm class to disclose information or feel comfortable after one session. And it's actually pushing each other and providing those spaces, um, you know, and environments where people feel comfortable and have the courage to speak up and to see, you know, a, a bunch of guys in a room actually like listen to each other and disclose information and feel okay with that. Um, to me, that's the most uh, Im important piece of the is that we're actually talking about it, but it has to happen over time. And when someone discloses that something's happened to them. Um, the learnings that can happen. And we're really trying to change that culture because as much as we have policies in place, um, it's that culture um, that works. And so that's where the leadership piece um, comes together and having someone step in um, into various situations, um, that takes training and that takes communication skills. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do over a period of time. And you've watched numbers of disclosures come up. So that's what sticks out to me is that when you operate over time to build trust, develop um, a better culture, you are going to see a more connected group, a more connected team on the field. So just watching guys feel more comfortable with each other to actually stand up for each other, you know, whether it's on the ice, on the field, away from the field now, it's a true brotherhood. And so that to me is what really um, is so important that I've just seen in so many different capacities that people become connected because they feel safer to disclose and actually talk about different things than just a sport. And that's part of prevention, actually, is having that conversation, right? Matt, anything that sticks out in your mind, particularly profound, that impacted you? Um, in between sessions during the wintertime there, I did some deep diving. I have some family and close friends in law enforcement. I just asked them, like, hey, like, you know, two questions. What are the most cases of domestic violence you've seen today and like what is the average and my one close friend said nine in a shift was the most he had in a day and he averages one to two a day in rural Alberta and my brother said he's one to two a day and his highest was five so those numbers really jumped off the page where it's just we're not seeing it and the first step to fixing a problem is admitting it mm -hmm. so maybe it was reporting it maybe it was ignoring it whatever whatever you know, problems we had in the past, you know, we can't just keep ignoring it, but you know, those numbers really jumped off the page to me. I, I talked to a few close friends as well, some female friends. And I said, Hey, have you ever felt, you know, unsafe in life or, you know, coming home from school or coming home from the bar? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. All the time. I'm afraid to walk to my car. I'm afraid to walk at night. I'm like, I have never felt that way. And that is just so messed up that you have to worry about walking to your car, maybe after class or something. That's not okay. Wow. Thank you so much, Jacob. How about you? Something really impactful that was said or that you learned? Uh, I think one of the biggest impactful things that I've learned um, throughout my short time with the boys is just uh, how many situations are so different from each other. Um, I think like Colleen said, 
being with the voice is just a continuous loop of learning, um, especially talking to younger athletes. Uh, you start to realize that you can prepare as much as you want, um, but at the end of the day, you have to still be that opening, that open ear just to listen to what the athletes have to say. Um, you know, so many different scenarios happen. And I think, you know, Tyson and I were like our first week of actually doing and talking to some athletes, um, we were hit with a question that we were so stuck with. And it was just such a, an eye opener and a shock to see, wow, these kids have already gone through such hurtful things. Um, so again, it's just, you know, the complexity and um, just the amount of stress that these kids have had to take on. And again, providing that open ear is just the huge thing behind this. Um, so again, I think that's, that's something that the voice just propels so well is, you know, not, you know, at the end of the day, we can work as hard as to solve, to solve a particular problem, but we are providing tools to other athletes so that they can help the younger generations follow. So I think that's just the biggest thing that I've learned with voice. How about you, Tyson? Um, I imagine you've probably had a lot of things that you could probably speak to, but something in particular that impacted you. Well, um, one thing that really struck me was how, I guess, naive I, I was and how, um, how easy it is to ignore in, in, in our society. It's, it's easy to ignore. And we've heard, um, again, we've heard about the numbers tonight and um, just the situations we were talking about at the beginning, I was still like, this never happens, happens all the time. And how many situations that we spoke about that I have been around and, and before would not even bat an eye and just realizing mm -hmm. what's actually going on here. And, and so, um, again, these conversations are so important, um, be, because the, the, the problems are real and they are serious and, and, and so that, that was very impactful, just, just understanding how much I, I didn't understand and how much I still don't understand and um, how simple conversations um, on these topics can, can um, reveal so much truth. Wow, and Marina, especially because you're working with so many of these athletes and, and you were saying that you sort of see them in a vulnerable, situation which is great it that speaks volumes about you <laughs> first of all that people feel comfortable to open to you but um is, is there a particular moment that really you know that you could share with us that uh, was really impactful i think one that happened for me actually happened um over the phone three nights ago um one of my friends has like been a childhood friend we had a discussion basically like when i came on back in february um and I brought the question to him and it was just about like, if you have a son and a daughter um, and then hypothetically they're in grade four, do you let the son walk home alone and do you let the daughter walk home alone? And I posed this question to him just cause I like, I like doing these little conversations and it's fun to hear what people have to say. Um, and he called me three nights ago and he was just like, okay, I know this happened in February. So like three months ago, I'm still thinking about this conversation. Hmm. And so it was just very interesting to me that he, like it's been three months. I like, I love the conversation and I just didn't know how much of an impact it had on him, but he just told me like how meaningful it was that we were able to have this discussion and like me being female and him being male, like our experiences were very different growing up. Um, and like Matt had said, like, there's, there's things that like, I don't like walking to my car and stuff like that. And so he just commented on how um, impressed he was that like through this voice training, you can have these conversations and there's no judgment. And he's like, you didn't make me feel bad about being a male because you had a different experience as a, as a girl growing up. Like he, he was just kind of blown away at the fact that like, he's still thinking about this conversation because it's happened. And I just think it's, it's amazing that after three months, you're still thinking about it. And it's been since December that these voice conversations have been going on and everyone's still thinking about it. And so, I think the thing that sticks with me the most is just the importance of how these conversations are handled, which is what voice is doing. Well, Marina, you obviously empowered him. You know, you, you can't mow these things down with, without being shoulder to shoulder with each other, men and women straight across. Like it's a monster tsunami that has to happen. So 
I appreciate your wisdom on this so much. Uh, you guys are amazing and wonderful. And Colleen, if you wouldn't mind sort of taking us to the end of this by just, um, if people want to learn more about voice and if they want to register their team or take part, can you give us some information about that? Sure. Um, so you can obviously go to our website, which is www.bethevoice.ca and find us on Twitter and Instagram at Be The Voice. And uh, the E is actually a three. It's not uh, an E. So you can find us there. You can sign up, send a message. Um, and we definitely look forward. Um, you know, the next steps really are uh, to filter out into more communities, more organizations. So um, we'll be working with probably about another 38 come um, the fall. Um, and I know Rick sort of stole my thunder a bit in terms of thanking, you know, Amanda, you, Minister here, thank you very much, because without, I think, your belief in the program and feeling uh, being part of some sessions of what is possible, um, you really have been instrumental of, you know, pushing voice forward and allowing us to do what we do. And that comes from a belief that by doing something different, um, we can be successful. And so thank you very, very much for that. And uh, we look forward to having you involved further uh, because there's certainly lots of stuff on the horizon. I appreciate that so much. And like I said, you are all such humongous inspirations. Nothing will go away without the conversation. And each of you is building teams and communities around you that feel comfortable to have the conversation. And every one of those steps is a step towards a person not having to go through this. So uh, with the deepest amount of love and gratitude, I thank you all so much. I can't wait to see you all in person to hug you with everything I've got. I will ask for permission, but I will hug you as long as it's okay. And uh, Colleen, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your dedication and for teaching us how to do things differently. Um, and a huge uh, thank you to the professional athletes who are stepping up. And um, we, we really need you. And I hope you know how valuable you are and how precious your time is to these other people, these young people that you're influencing. So thank you. And thank you to everyone who took some time to watch us today. Uh, follow Be The Voice on Twitter and learn more about the program, as well as Alberta Women um, to learn more about Sexual Violence Awareness Month uh, and, uh, and our stakeholders and who we're dealing with. There's some rock stars out there, some amazing people in this province. And uh, let's keep going out there and making differences in our communities. Thank you so much.